Hey everybody, so welcome back. So for today's project, we are gonna be doing a uh, brake upgrade on this Indy Light. It's a 1996 Indy Light Deluxe 340, fan cold. Um, as you probably already know, the Indy Light came with a simple uh, brake, a uh, cable brake. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that and we're gonna upgrade it to a, a, a hydraulic brake off of a uh, Gen 2. I believe this particular caliper and brake assembly came off of a 99 Super Sport, uh, 440 or a 550, whatever engine was in that particular sled. So with that, so let's go ahead and uh, raise the hood on the sled and see what we're looking at. Okay. So what you guys may or may not know is the Indy Light was essentially based off the first uh, XLT chassis and even though it's a smaller form factor it shares a lot of components from the early XLTs and one of them that it shares is the chain case right so with a particular chain case it's a simple drop-in caliper it's only held on by two bolts one here one here and then that comes right out so if you look at any mid 90s wedge chassis, whether it be an XLT, an aggressive chassis, a Gen 2, <coughs> which is essentially just a uh, an upgraded wedge with different plastics, the chain cases for for the most part is all the same. So what's nice about this is this should be a fairly straightforward upgrade. So while we walk over to the bench, I'll show you what we got. All right, guys, so this is what we're going to use for this upgrade. It's uh, the standard hydraulic brake uh, caliper assembly from Polaris. It's got a floating caliper with the bracket and the pads, the hydraulic line, and the standard uh, brake control assembly that Polaris has been using for, honestly, it seems like the last 12 years. Uh, this is pretty standard fare. You probably see it on most of the Polaris sleds. And then I also grabbed the wiring harness um, for the back of the block. Um, I'm definitely going to wire in the switch. And we'll probably wire in the controls for the hand and thumb warmers. Uh, I'll probably do that at a later date. I got to grab the, um, the schematics for the Indy Light to see exactly where everything goes to. So, all right, but enough talking. Let's get uh, to taking this thing apart. All right, guys, so what we're going to do is we're going to remove the existing brake caliper assembly off first. It's held on by two bolts. Uh, they're both 916, so we're just going to take these off, and then it's going to pop out. Um, so what I'm going to do on this project, because I'm not sure that the hose is going to be long enough, so essentially I'm going to pull everything apart, and then leaving the existing assembly kind of intact, before I remove everything because I want to make sure everything's going to line up and be long enough before I make any final commitments. Uh, so anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to remove this uh, caliper first and then what we're going to do is we're going to remove the, the handlebar pad off the bars and then we're going to remove the, the console as much as we can. The console is held on by uh, 716 bolts. There's one here, there's one here, and there's uh, two on the other side and approximately in the same location and then there's a couple Torx bolts that are holding the console on and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, Get all this stuff off first and make sure that everything's gonna be long enough uh, Before we start removing the, the existing assembly and go from there All right, so the uh, the new brake handle is has been routed up through the console. The uh, the caliper is on there, and decided to take the seat off just so I could have a little bit more uh, freedom as far as getting the console up. Because again, on with these Indy lights, the uh, the console is not split, so <clears throat> um, everything has to come through this one hole. So what I also did is I also separated the bars from the ste steering post just so I could get the, uh, the console up and enough to get the, uh, the brake handle up into the, uh, into the hole. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the uh, handlebars back together and I'm going to put the, uh, the handle temporarily on the bars and I'm going to turn the bar left and right and make sure I have enough slack 
on it with no issues and no bonding. And if, if everything looks good, we're going to start taking the old brake assembly apart. So uh, let's go try that now. All right, so we have the handlebars temporarily mounted back up on the steering post. And I just went through the full range of motions on the uh, with the new uh, brake assembly on the bars. And it looks like we're at plenty of slack, no really areas of concerns as far as if the cable being too short or pinching on anything uh, or anything like that. So at this point, it's gonna be pretty safe to say that we can go ahead and remove the existing uh, brake cable assembly. Um, and the reason why I held off before I completely tore into this thing, the reason is, is when, is because of the existing brake block that Polaris uh, designed, um, the way this thing is assembled in the factory is that the brake block is not split just like the console it actually comes over the bars first and then the grip comes over the uh over the bars so there's no way for you to get this block off the bar unless you um uh destroy the grip and the sport the the heating element for the 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 uh the bar warmers even though there there's a cover plate uh, on the end of it basically it only holds this essentially this little high low switch on the uh, on the brake assembly everything else is it's just a single piece so again the reason why I didn't go after this thing full force is I want to make sure that uh, the, the new brake assembly was going to fit because the only way to get this thing off uh, the bars is I'm going to have to break it loose I'm going to have to destroy it so I want to make sure that we're good before we went down that road so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and remove this and uh, start putting everything back together. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, guys. So I got the, uh, the brake assembly mounted on the bars just temporarily. And I threw the, uh, the uh, handlebar pad on there just to see how it was going to look. And for the most part, it, it fits pretty well. I'm going to have to do a little bit of trimming around the uh, around the uh, on the underside of the pad to fit around the uh, the difference of the contour of the of that particular assembly. But for the most part, it fit pretty well on uh, first try. So here's the uh, the caliper mounted up. So if you remember, th again, this is a uh, a brake caliper from a liquid cool sled. Um, so on the Polaris ones. The, uh, the brake caliper was actually cooled by the coolant. Since this is a fan cooled sled, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. So there's really no need for it. Um, we can go ahead and do that. And essentially that's it. At this point, it's just a matter of figuring out the wiring, which I'm probably gonna make another video on that once I figure everything out. Um, but just, here you go. Here is the original brake switch that was, uh, that's on the uh, that was on the, um, the original handle the brake block right so there's a micro switch it's an orange and black and here's the uh, the new switch right coming out of the uh, the new brake assembly and, and this is uh, for the wiring harness I took so it's just a one for one I'm just gonna splice that up so the brake like brake light will work and then uh, down here we got a switch for the high and low for the high beam and low beam. And so that's the original wiring harness um, to the uh, the indie light. So I also have the uh, the, the uh, pigtails that go in the block that control this. So that I actually I got to go on on the internet and, and figure out the wiring scheme and all the pinouts uh, to figure out what controls that for the uh, for the functions. Um, the hand warmers I'm not sure if I'm going to screw around with. Because honestly, I think it's gonna be a lot of work for a little gain. You know, it's I just I just tend to keep that intact than mess around with these particular slider switches. I don't know. I may. I, I'm not sure at this point. It all depends on uh, how I make out with the uh, the wiring. So there you go. Everything looks good. And everything works. Started the sled up and <laughs> everything works. Started right up. All the lights came on, which was good. So at this point, it's just gonna. I'm just gonna spend some time buttoning up, and then uh, come back once everything's uh, put back together. All right, so everything's buttoned back up. 
Uh, I did uh, wire in the, the brake light off the switch. I, can, I did uh, go ahead and make my connections on that. So that I got the, uh, the light switch, uh, the high-low dimmer hanging. I gotta figure that out. But there you go, everything's buttoned up. The crash pad looks pretty good. Uh, I did put a couple of uh, zip ties around it just to hold it down so it kind of makes it conform to a little bit better. Um, tail light works, brake light works. It does run, um, but with everything, um, there is a problem. Um, I fired it up and I noticed it wasn't quite running right and the uh, magneto side isn't firing it. You know, I do have spark. It is cold, so on that one side. So it looks like I have a carburetor, carburetor issue. It's probably bad gas or something going on with that carb. So I'm gonna take the everything apart again to, tomorrow and go ahead and clean everything up and do the seasonal maintenance on everything else like we should be doing anyway. But here you go. This is a typical reason why you should be uh, doing maintenance on the sleds. Um, so, but. So there you go. And if you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. If you like, and if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Uh, my channel is mainly stuff I do in my garage, snowmobiling, cars, tools, stuff like that. Um, as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.